Welcome to the WHHI TV Daily News. I'm Betsy McDaniel, in for Robin Zimmerman today, who is on vacation. But there's still a lot to talk about, so let's get started with today's headlines. Will Amazon soon be your wireless provider? The package delivery giant continues to look for new ways to get consumers to sign up for their crown jewel, a Prime membership. To that end, Bloomberg has reported that Amazon is in talks with several wireless carriers, including Verizon, T-Mobile, and Dish Network, to offer mobile services to U.S. Prime members. The deal could include a $10 monthly plan and a possibly free unlimited plan. A couple of presidential hopefuls from South Carolina have spent some time in the national spotlight recently. First, former governor and former ambassador to the United Nations during the Trump administration, Nikki Haley, held a town hall on CNN Sunday night. In it, she called North Korean dictator a thug and criticized Trump for praising him in recent days. In other takeaways, she did not say whether she would support a six-week abortion ban like the one recently signed by McMaster. She called fellow candidate Ron DeSantis a hypocrite for giving Disney tax breaks to retain jobs in Florida while being locked in a battle over Disney's self-governing status. And when it comes to the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine, Haley said Ukraine winning the war will prevent escalation into a larger conflict. Senator Tim Scott appeared on ABC's The View on Monday, where he was grilled on a number of topics, but in the forefront was that of systemic racism, with host Sonny Hostin stating, you're the first black senator elected in the South since Reconstruction. I'm the exception, you're the exception, maybe Ms. Whoopi Goldberg is the exception, but we are not the rule. Scott responded by saying, it is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to young African-American kids today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. Going on to say, I believe America can do for anyone what she's done for me. Restoring hope, creating opportunities, and defending and protecting the America that we love is such an important combination. Scott was first appointed to the Senate by his now opponent, Nikki Haley, in 2013. He subsequently won election in 2014 and was reelected in 2016 and 2022. Last year, as a way to address the high number of teacher vacancies in the state, the South Carolina Teacher Recruitment and Retention Task Force was created. The panel included state lawmakers, state education officials, and future, current, and former teachers. Last week, that task force released 23 recommendations. The recommendations fit into four broad categories, compensation and evaluation, recruitment, educator preparation, and working conditions. But a few main takeaways are raising teacher pay to $50,000 a year by 2026, a move the governor supports, revised policies for student behavior and parental support, and expanding loan forgiveness programs for teachers. And Palmetto Bluff club members got a pleasant surprise in their inboxes recently, most likely spurred on by an ongoing civil action lawsuit against the developers. The mandatory club membership requirement for all current and future members will be waived. For most, that will mean a savings of tens of thousands of dollars if they choose to opt out. That same email also outlined a program that will make Palmetto Bluff more renter-friendly. Short-term rentals will now be allowed to use club facilities for an extra nightly fee if the homeowner is a member. In the past, those facilities were off-limits for renters. In addition, the club will waive its right to place a lien on members' property for unpaid dues, fees, and charges, including members who remained active club members at that time. The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WHHITV. And if you have an idea for a news story, we'd love to hear it, so drop us a line at news at WHHITV.com. And now here's Justin Jarrett with what happened last night in the loco. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. The Bluffton Bobcats cut the ribbon on a new addition to their athletic facilities last week, unveiling a new field house that will be home to the school's wrestling and cheer teams, in addition to housing locker rooms for student athletes and officials and a training room. The new field house is positioned beyond the end zone of the football stadium and features lighted signage to let everyone know they're in the Bobcat den. Can't wait to see it this fall. Across the bridge at Hilton Head High, one of the Seahawks basketball standouts is getting an opportunity to continue her career at the next level. Janiah Farabee made her commitment to play at Fayetteville Technical Community College in North Carolina next season. Farabee averaged 7 points, 5.8 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and 1.9 steals per game as a senior at HHIHS. And we told you yesterday about some loco golfers competing in the final round of U.S. Open qualifying. Bluffton's William McGirt had a nice day, shooting four under par over 36 holes in Columbus, Ohio, but it took eight under to get through. Two-time RBC Heritage champion Stuart Sink shot nine under to claim one of those spots. Buford's Mark Anderson and Bluffton amateur Luke Block also failed to qualify in Durham, North Carolina. 
For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks, Justin. Now I'll hand it over to Maria for a look at our weather. Thanks, Betsy. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like the temperatures are mostly going to stay in the 80s the rest of the week, and we're only going to see a thunderstorm about midweek. Taking a look at Wednesday, it's going to be cloudy and humid, with Hillnet having a high of 87, a low of 71, Bluffton's going to have a high of 89, a low of 70, and Buford's going to have a high of 89, and a low of 70. The sunrise for Wednesday is going to be at 616, and sunset's going to be at 827. Taking a look at the beach tides, high tide's going to be at 1245 p.m., and low tide's going to be at 745 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week, a little bit into the weekend. Thursday is going to be sunny to partly cloudy with an afternoon thunderstorm rolling through. Highs will be in the 80s, lows in the 70s. Come Friday is going to be partly cloudy with highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. And then come Saturday, it's just going to be sunny with highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. That's it for today. Let's hit it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. We'll get the latest Mind Your Health segment with Dr. Debbie Lines after a quick break. Stay with us.